One hadith and the meaning is such that because the noble companions, the Prophet wasallam, the companions were in the company of the Prophet wasallam morning and evening, day and night. And they used to hear about deeds, good actions, good amal. And the Holy Prophet Wasallam would give ta'aleem and education and give news to the Sahaba of deeds. And they would gather new information, extra information. And they would learn also on top of doing the actions, what are the rewards for doing those actions, the thawab. And those same facts have, have reached to us, have come to us. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to the human being given so many opportunities to earn good deeds that as long as an individual breathes then with every breath he can earn the reward of good deeds and on every good deed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed a reward rewards and in the same way we have ibadat we have nawafil we have voluntary actions we have small kalimats Upon which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed big rewards. We hear, we read the hadith, alhamdulillah. So the sahaba ikram, when they saw all of these things, they said once, that Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that there are so many deeds that Allah ta'ala has given, so many favors of Allah upon us, so many gifts of Allah upon us, that even the small, small deeds, so-called, Allah has given big reward, big thawab, that a human being cannot imagine the amount of reward Allah Ta'ala has placed upon doing good deeds. So we cannot understand that so much thawab we are getting or people will get upon doing good deeds. And we're doing these deeds, small deeds, say subhanallah, big deed, say alhamdulillah, big deed, big thawab, say la ilaha illallah, big deed. Recite Durood Sharif once, great thawab. We see this. So, so many good deeds. Uh, we unconsciously, unconsciously we, we practice. And we don't know about the reward, but Allah Ta'ala records the thawab. So the Sabah Karam asked that all of these things that we see, we cannot understand, despite all of this, that tomorrow the day of judgment, on the plane of resurrection, how will people lose out? How will people have difficulty uh, on those occasions? How will they be destroyed? They will have so much thawab for the deeds that we cannot understand. That how um, will we fail? How will we lose out on the day of judgment, on the day of hashr? This cannot be. We don't understand. So why will this happen? Will this actually happen? Is the question. And Nabi al Karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam stated that yes, this will occur. People will be destroyed. On the Day of Judgment, definitely they'll be destroyed. And not just that they don't have amal, they'll have deeds. Many deeds, they will com- practice the deeds. Many deeds, many times overlooked. Allah Ta'ala's fadl, Allah's blessings that we, alhamdulillah, hear. Allah gives us the tawfiq, the ability we pray salah, we do tilawat, we recite. Um, Shaban is here now, Ramadan is coming, Allah gives big nights. Great nights, Allah gives the tawfiq to do amal, uh, amal, different deeds, and we practice the sunnah, mashallah, you'll see that at this time, only time when Ramadan comes, then in Makkah and Medina, Tul Manawra, there'll be no place left free, no free space, every square inch, millimeter will be used, that in itikaf, it's so many people that it's difficult to walk, in Makkah al Mukarma, it's very difficult, that... Um, that how, how, how can you walk around you have to jump over people and musallis and the mutakif there's so many and there's an ajeeb scene and in the morning is mataf in the mataf you go when the tawaf is happening subhanallah in the morning then day and night during sahur and sahri and during sahri and after taraweeh there's a beautiful scene alhamdulillah 
And so many good deeds, everyone who's working, somebody's feeding, somebody dates, somebody's giving somebody water to drink, different things, and there are mounds of good deeds. So when a person sees all of these things, he says that, mashallah, they've got the stamp of approval, the seal of Jannah, these people, a person thinks. So Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but no. There will be these deeds, the people will commit these actions, they'll have the umrah, the hajj, the dhikr they will do, and adhkar, and remembering Allah. But they will be lost out, they will lose out on the day of judgment, resurrection. So we, you have to understand this point, the point that I'm trying to make here. And the, the real point of our discussion is coming up, that we need to listen to and that we need to understand that is in this hadith. And the important, you can say, cornerstone is coming. Point. Whoever has the desire for the akhirah, hereafter has yaqeen on these points. Who has fikr for his death and the hereafter, I am speaking for us all in that position. Otherwise, we hear speeches every day, lectures, and the words come in the right, go out the left, and ta'aleem, education just took place. How many people understood? So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may He give us a tawfiq, and may He give us understanding that after hearing, these words descend onto our hearts. Allah is the one who can give. And who will give? We all sat here, mashallah, with good deeds. But are we included in those people that Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, no, they will be destroyed. They will be destroyed. They will have so many amal deeds to their name, even to this extent. It's stated that if these people have so many good deeds, they will bring them. Not if they will bring them. These are the words of the hadith. That the fact is that people will have so many deeds, so many deeds they will have to their name that when people will come to their to say Alhamdulillah, they'll have so many good deeds that if that insan, if his deeds are placed onto a mountain, then the mountain evil will be uh, heavily burdened with the deeds. For example, you've just prayed Salah. Do you know how many deeds you've got to your name now? You think I just stood and I prayed Salah. My brothers, as soon as you made the intention to pray the Salah, say Subhanallah. As soon as my Allah allowed us to have thoughts in our minds for this Allah. Why? Because after uh, cancelling thousands of other intentions, bad, we made a good intention to ask that person who was lost in bad thoughts, who did amal on a bad deed, who went to bad deeds. There'll be hundreds of thousands of people if you take out a percentage that one is the line of those people who have the intention to raise a line. In comparison to that, there are hundreds of thousands of people against that one person who have very bad intentions. Bad near men and women. So we, we, now the point is coming after this, the, the crux. Allah Ta'ala instilled in our minds the intention. And Allah Ta'ala allowed us to overcome and defeat hundreds of thousands of shaitani thoughts and a good deed arose in our mind. Say subhanAllah, subhanAllah, think these points. It wasn't our father who gave us a good thought to do a good deed. Who allowed us to think good that you've come here for dhikr, to this dhikr gathering? Who brought you and me, us? Who totally sometimes happens, you don't have a mood. You don't feel like half an hour before you don't feel like coming. One hour ago, you probably didn't feel like coming. But Allah, He is the one who allows us to come here. Who are you to make a mood? Allah, Allah see how I will send you to the gathering of the God. Allah takes us from the ears and drags us to this gathering. This is Allah. If my heart feels like it or not, whether I feel like it or not, I speak rubbish, nonsense, shaitan deceives me. Allah Ta'ala says, it's not your duty. You can try to stay away. But my, Allah Ta'ala says, my rahmah, my rahm, I take you from the ears and I drag you back to that gathering of dhikr of Allah. Does this happen or not? Tell me. So this is the science of intention. So, uh, since I made the intention that oh, we'll go to Makki Masjid, we'll pray Salah, then we'll, so that's I made an intention. And to make the intention itself is a massive task. And to, to wipe away the intention, this is Allah's power that allows us to make intention. This is Allah's system. So we make an intention. There are mountains, mountains of evil to break away our good intentions. Many times you'll have intention, but you cannot set forth a, a direction towards that good deed. And, for example, um, for example, if you have a pain in the eye, or if you have a twist in the ankle, oh, I got up and suddenly my, my ankle twisted, I couldn't go. I went to the bathroom to have a bath. And what happened? I went in there, I was totally fine. As soon as I was coming out, and then my foot slipped and I, and I, and I fell, and I couldn't do what I wanted to do. I remember today that doctor was a very good person, and in Omar I met him, I can't remember his name at the moment. And... Um, I went to see him in hospital, and when a, when a person has, um, mashallah, he, and his life suddenly improved and changed, he used to pray salah here, uh, so I remember at this point today, may Allah ta'ala give him jannah, flower him with jannah, he didn't have a beard, um, he got married here, and it was a modern type of setup, and he was a doctor, I can't remember his name at the moment in my mind, and so he... Um, we realized, where's he gone, Dr. Saib? I haven't seen him for a few days. 
and he used to recite Quran and after Maghrib until Isha till Ishraq and suddenly his life changed and he had the beard he's gone to Umrah and I met him Umrah very simple and this is how in the world change and improvement tuck 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 one after the other one after the other and he had a love for the wali of Allah and I realized that he is very ill severely ill what happened? and he was in a very bad condition he's in hospital so I and Qali Sahib I think was with me and I went with him maybe I said let's go and meet him Dr. Sahib and uh, he was lying we went to the hospital he was lying on the hospital bed he said I'm in a very bad situation in the hospital uh, the medicine has uh, dragged me down I'm in a very bad condition and the poor soul he was there were antibiotics being given to him so what happened to him and uh, nothing he just came to pray salah look here now he came to pray salah and during salah he said that I took my shoes off I picked my shoes up and then I was imbalanced and my, my, my foot I twisted he told me the story and he said such a crack came and he's a doctor himself I thought what's happened here that time I went to the hospital and we realized there was a crack or a fracture a crack a fracture in the bone infection came to this extent after some days he passed away and he went to Allah inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raju. So my brothers, there's no guarantee. There are many obstacles, many hurdles, many barriers, many restrictions that block our intentions. We think we're big-headed, I've prayed salah, I've done good, I've done so much. But look at the amount of reward Allah Ta'ala has given on that knee, on the intention, on that walking, on that wudu. Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah states, and this is his uh, jurisprudence, that when a person, his verdict, that when a person does wudu, then wherever the water of wudu reaches on his body, those limbs, those parts of the body, the sins are removed. And he was a Sahib Kashf, he had vision, he saw. And um, some people oppose what he said, but he saw this. He saw this. That a person, every part of the body where the water of the wudu reaches, the sins are removed. Is this a small favor of Allah? Tell me, my friends. Is this a small favor? What is the sin? Allahu Akbar. Sin, problems, they, 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 they lay, um, give birth to problems and difficulties and hurdles, issues. But subhanAllah, Allah Nabi Sallallahu said that as soon as you make intention, then you do good, and you do wudu, then Allah Ta'ala cools that person and removes the sins. Another example. Favor of Allah. Yeah? So what was I saying? Allah Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that there will be people, despite them having so many good deeds to the name. Look how many good deeds just praying salah makes, gives birth to. But they will lose out. They will be destroyed. They will fail. In the hereafter. So now let's grab the root cause that gives the result that we will fail. We should not allow that root cause to take effect. We shouldn't look towards our deeds. Rather we should go towards those uh, factors that the Prophet ﷺ said that protect yourself so that you can get all of the rewards for all of the good deeds. And you will succeed totally. And what is that? That Rasulullah has told us. What is that? Subhanallah, what's that factor? Rasulullah sallallahu said that on the day of judgment, people will be destroyed, they will fail. Why? They'll have so many good deeds, they will have committed and implemented in the earth. They will take those deeds to the hereafter, but they will be buried under those good deeds, they will fail. What's the reason for the failure? Rasulullah sallallahu said the reason for this is that Allah Ta'ala's ni'mas, that Allah Ta'ala's ni'mas will be there, but they will not fully benefit from the ni'mas. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, I'll explain. Allah Ta'ala's ni'mas, due to the ni'mas of Allah, those good deeds that the person has committed, they'll be suppressed, they'll be finished, wiped away. Why? Why? Because Allah Ta'ala's na'mas, so many na'mas of Allah come upon us, are on top of us, are with us. So many na'mas Allah Ta'ala has given to us, Allah has bestowed to us, that we can, we'll lose count. There's so many, millions, and the person will come with the good deeds to the hereafter, but the na'mas of Allah will be so much, they will outnumber his deeds and the his good deeds he will commit it will, will, have no, will not be able to compare. Eh? They will not be able to compete. You don't understand what I'm saying. Okay, I'll explain further. Yes, yeah, so you understand what good deeds are. give an example naturally that we know. That, that, yeah, so now let's take a natural example of a ni'mah of Allah. That Allah has given us so many ni'mahs, Allah's mercy, that we make an intention, we do good deeds. These are all ni'mahs of Allah, aren't they? So Allah Ta'ala stated, Allah Ta'ala's ni'mahs, favors, gifts on us are so much that when we compare our good deeds to Allah's ni'mahs, our good deeds will finish, but Allah's ni'mahs will outnumber our good deeds. So what should we do then? What should we do to compete? So all our good deeds will outcome, uh, uh, will be suppressed less in number. The reason is that we were not grateful for Allah Ta'ala's ni'mas. We weren't shakirs. And because we were ungrateful, so Allah says, I will compete. You will be your good deeds 
and your good deeds will be less compared to Allah's ni'mas. And because we weren't grateful for Allah's ni'mas, we will lose out. So what's the reason behind this? The message here, the underlying factor is this, that Allah gives us so many ni'mas, so many gifts, so many favors, but we are ungrateful and we are not um, grateful to Allah Ta'ala for His favors and we keep on doing deeds and we're not grateful to Allah for the fact that we're doing good deeds all life long doesn't matter how many amal we implement but if we're not grateful to Allah for His namas then our good deeds will be destroyed and they will stay behind and remain behind and we'll lose out do you understand what I'm saying? so we we despite doing ibadat worshipping we become useless because we are not grateful to Allah for His namas for His gifts and His favors upon us. So what are Allah's ni'mas? Now let's start thinking. Let's start looking at them. Let's list them out. Think. There are so many. They are infinite. Infinite. Look, from our body, Hazrat ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, state, may Allah be pleased with him, the first question will be asked about Allah's favors that He gave to us. The first favor Allah will ask us, ask us about is health. Saha. Sehat. Health. Allah will ask us, question us. Now let's think. How many illnesses there are in our lives? How much life Allah has given to us? There's so much of our life. How much has it passed in illness and how much in good health? More of our life has passed in good health, hasn't it? Or have we stayed mostly in our life in hospital? Yes. That for example, if we go to hospital, we say, Oh, I'm finished. Oh, I've lost out. Oh, I'm, I'm finished. Even a week in hospital is so difficult. But then Allah Ta'ala is merciful on us and He takes, it, takes us out of the hospital. He says, Look, I just kept you in hospital for a week and you're crying. Oh, lifelong. The greater ratio percentage is in good health. Not in the hospital, is it? But are we grateful to Allah for the good health or are we ungrateful? Tell me. Are we? We're ungrateful. How are we ungrateful? How are we ungrateful? How do we implement ungratefulness to Allah for the ni'mas of Allah? That Allah Ta'ala has given us good things, good qualities and resources, and using those resources, we are ungrateful to Allah. The eye that Allah has given us, the eyes. What is the value of the eyes Allah has given to us? They are, the, eye, the value of the eyes is priceless. They are priceless. And the biggest action of ungratefulness is this, that how do we utilize the eyes? That with the same eyes, we look at bad things, evil things, impure things, dirty things, wrong things. The Allah Ta'ala says, I don't like that you use the eyes to look at bad things, evil things, sinful things. And are we grateful at that time or ungrateful? We are ungrateful. Let's take the tongue now. A resource, hands, our ears, our nose, our bodies, our limbs, different parts of the body. These are all ni'mas of Allah. And if these things are used, utilized for wrong things, then we are ungrateful. And if we are ungrateful, then it doesn't matter how many amal we implement, how many acts of worship we do, but they will imbalance out on the Day of Judgment. So this hadith gives us a message, my friends, that the servant of Allah should never be ungrateful to Allah, should never disobey Allah. We should save ourselves from disobedience and sins. When a human being has a yaqeen on these words of Allah and he implements these, then automatically he becomes grateful with the fadl of Allah, with the blessings of Allah. He becomes a shakir, a grateful servant to Allah. This is the point we need to understand today. Every single thing in the world, in our lives, is a naam of Allah, is a favor of Allah. Even a dry piece of chapati or bread is a great naam of Allah. Allah will question us about that on the Day of Judgment. One sip of cold water or a glass of cold water is a naam of Allah. One seed of a date is a, is a thawab from Allah. We have the house, we have cars and mansions and food to eat and sofas, armchairs, house, assets. What do we not have in our homes and outside? And the whole, we have houses upon houses and the whole household is disobedient to Allah. The more money Allah Ta'ala gives to us, the more mercies Allah gives to us, Allah gives the wealth, the ni'mah of wealth. With that wealth, what do we do? Is this our father's wealth? That our father gave us money and we think this is our inheritance. Every pound, every penny Allah has given to us and every penny Allah Ta'ala will account for. The greatest accountant is Allah and the greatest accounts, balance sheet, profit and loss will be will be manufactured by Allah, will be presented by Allah. Look, this is what you earned, this is how you spent, what did you spend on, how did you disobey me with your money? Will we be able to answer to Allah on the Day of Judgment? Tell me. So my brothers, life has to be spent, life has to be lived very cautiously, very carefully. I swear by Allah, the doors will be slammed on our face and we'll lose out in thereafter. But we have time now still what we're living. I realize today what we're saying. I should say, I've got my life, I've got at least a life. Do tawbah, the previous sins forgiven, say subhanallah. We understand? When Allah Ta'ala said he's understood, I do tawbah. 
I do tawbah, if I do tawbah, then I get the rewards. And after today, what should be my life? Very simple life. Allah Ta'ala, everything I do, everything I do from my body, to the money, to the assets you give me, to my business, to my children, totally I will spend according to your system. Totally. And what is your system, my mawla? I will live my life according to this. And mashallah, I cannot understand if I lose out all the sex of the past. Now every person can be an alim or a scholar or a muhaddith or a scholar. And time and time again, we don't have time every day. The muftiyan don't have time. The ulama ikram, the respectful scholars, we keep on pestering them and bugging their brains and their minds. So Allah Ta'ala, give us a simple method due to which we can learn and understand that our whole life can be lived in accordance to your, your obedience and away from your disobedience. Shall I tell you the tariqah? You'll implement this. You have a true promise you give to me. Then let's change and improve our lives. Let's forget the previous life from today. And Allah, we will not be able to balance our lives and give the answer to Allah. This hadith is very great indeed. We will not be able to answer to Allah. No. Yes, if we do tawbah, if we repent and after repenting, then if we live our lives in the right way, then inshallah, our whole body, we will be grateful for the whole body that Allah Ta'ala has given to us. We'll be grateful for the money Allah has given, for our bodies, for our children. And is, is, uh, are our children not a resource, not a name of Allah? Ask those who don't have a children for 10 years, 15 years, 8 years. They all get married. Second time they get married. I wanted a, a, a son and a daughter came. We complained. Or I wanted a daughter and a son came. This is the story because it's not in our control. Who gives Allah? What do we do with our children? Tell me. Six years old, then we teach them music, we teach them the rhythms, and then how to dance, the child, the son, and the daughter. Tell me, tell me, is this justice? From the young age, we, we teach our children disobedience until they have grown up. We make them like animals, wild animals. And it's the parents, the mother and the father who make the children like animals. Total little rubbish, oh, it's too hard here in this hemisphere. There's no primary pressure. It's our own shaitani actions. Allah Ta'ala has given us a ni'mah. Such a great ni'mah Allah has given to us. Such a great favor. It doesn't make a difference that you made them a hafid and then you throw them into the bad environment. And you sit them in, the, uh, in a bad environment that we give them, we hand them over to the Molana for half an hour in the evening. And then they come out, we think that they're Janaid Baghdadi. That they're Wali Vala. That the child is formed at home. Molana Saab cannot make the character of the child. In the 30, 45 minutes, what can he do? The whole Jamaat is there. How much akhlaq can he teach to the child in half an hour? How many words will the child remember? And today in the generation, you cannot even, you can say, scold the children. You've sent the children for tarbiyah. And the, the ustad, the teacher, if he says something for tarbiyah, he says, oh, he came back and he, 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 he hit me, or he said something bad to me. How will we give tarbiyah to the children in just that small amount of time? It's the parents, the mother and father, with love, affection, good example, role model, a demonstration they teach to the children but when they become like animals and the half is like a, um, mad or there's a jinn or some external force and we complain we cry oh our children what's happened to them the child grows up doesn't become bad when he's grown up the child is spoiled at that time from the young age when we don't rear the children in the right way when he comes into his own and he's given the bad environment and those mother and father parents who are of understanding when the child is born they have good planning I've seen such homes that the other has been given in the right ear and then they are planning the life for the child and they leave uh, the child they leave the, the country they do hijrah for that one child for the tarbiyah alhamdulillah they do so much that the whole life is improved for those children subhanallah I'm speaking about this world we're living in this world I swear by Allah a person is amazed, surprised. They change their life, their halal, they condition they leave their home, they do hijrat. Why? Because this child has been given to us, this child, we don't want to give him artificial life, just teach Quran and make him like this or that. No. They, they, they want to instill everything in the child, good character, that the child should not be disobedient. Rather on the day of judgment when the child goes, then every deed of my child needs to be weighed correctly, purely. Don't make them artificial. No. Uh, artificial and temporary. No. This is not how we will succeed, my brothers. When we will be given hisab on the scale on the hereafter, then we'll know how much Quran have we got, how much salah we got, how much dhikr we got, how much Sufis were, how much Hazrat Sahibs we are. Yes, then we'll realize the true essence of it. We have no intention, no struggle, no making effort, no trying. No, we just sat there, put our hands on our hands, and we give up. And, and how sad Allah's Nabi is saying that on the day of judgment you will come with that many amal, so many deeds they'll be refused because you are ungrateful for Allah's ni'mas. You prayed salah, then after that with the same eyes you did bad deeds, with your own hands you did bad deeds. You were given money, with that money you utilized it on um, impermissible actions. Money is an example Allah Ta'ala is giving. Look, the example here has been given. We've been taught, educated how to spend money. Allah Ta'ala says that the money that's coming to you, that I'm giving you, that 2.5% of your 
your wealth is not yours from all of this wealth. Subhanallah. In other words, this awareness is being created just for this. Allah Ta'ala wants to create an awareness that this much percent of your wealth, the question does arise that you put your hands on this money, 2.5%. Yes, that, that you're, you're, you will have to take out from that amount of money, you've got 2.5% to give to others. So I realize if this was mine, then why would Allah Ta'ala take this percentage of wealth from me? Allah would never ask. So in reality, this, this wealth is not ours. It's not ours. Allah Ta'ala is saying that this will go to your mother, to your wife, to your children when you pass away. And this is how much you should spend when you're alive, on your wife, children, mother, on the poor people, the needy, whoever it is, doesn't matter what religion, background, creed, religion, even to those, rizq has to be distributed, food has to be given to them, clothes has to be given to them, mal has to be given to them. Even if your risk is halal, but Allah Ta'ala says that a person, even if he doesn't believe in Allah, he's hungry from your halal and give to that person, say subhanallah, subhanallah. So can anybody become a, a, a Muslim? Can he become a terrorist? Never. A Muslim, peaceful, loving, caring, affectionate, that when we get money, a risk, then we shouldn't see this person, a believer, non-believer, religion, who does he prostrate to? No, we have no link with that. The person is in need. We don't give him da'wah, that I'm giving you money because I'm going to propagate Islam to you, spread Islam to you. No, no preconditions. That this is the right of this person. He's a human being. We have money. He stood in front of me. He's my neighbor. I will maybe not eat. I will stay hungry. But I will give to this person. Because you know, no, bring out the Quran. I'm teaching Quran. These are my uh, principles. Follow this deen. Then I'll give you money. You'll say, run away. Are you coming to give me food? Or are you coming to get tax from me? No, he should never feel that there are any preconditions. Humanity, everyone is the son of Adam alayhi salam. Someone's gone this way, down this path, down this path. If Allah Ta'ala wants, he will give them hidayah. He'll give them, but we have to help them when they're in need. So money, this is the favor of Allah. And we stash it down our pockets. We don't spend on people. We don't assist people. And the, we think, oh, this is my father's money. The father's not giving money to the children to spend. How sad. This is not our right. We don't have a balance in our lives. Yes, Allah Ta'ala has given us places to live, our children, Allah has given us assets, wife, son, daughter, wife's over there, husband's there, one and a half, two years, three years, don't know where the wife's living, how they're growing up, the children, how's my son, how's my daughter, what's the right of the wife? We have no knowledge, no awareness, no care. Is this life? Will we not be accounted for this? Tell me. Tomorrow our son, our daughter, they'll, they'll stand and say, I don't know, this is my father, where was he? I think he's a foreigner. I think he's a stranger. He never came to us. When was I born? Where did he go? I never saw him. The wife, will she not speak out? That you never gave her the haq, the rights? Tell me this. That that daughter, will she not speak? Who you did not give the rights to? Tarbiyah is done when you are present. Oh, Father, Allah will say that. What tarbiyah? How did you, how did you give the right education and bring it to children? The neighbors brought up your children. Other people brought up your children. Your relatives, what tarbiyah did you do, oh Father? What, what, what share did you have in there bringing up? You just gave them money and throw the, threw them down the, the drain? Every person, everything has a haqqa right. How will we give the answer? Where will your salah go? Will your, will your dhikr go? Where will your beards and amamas and your prayer go? Tell me. Tell me. So come, let's see that let's seek such an action due to which if we bring the action into our lives, then there'll be a balance in our life. Equilibrium. Yes. So Sufism, we think we are embarked on the path of Sufism. Tasawwuf, but I don't know what we've considered as Sufism. We think that Sufism is some um, weird sort of uh, practice and discussion and vision and magic. There's some ajeeb concept. The meaning of Sufism, Tasawwuf, is the Muslim who practices Islam and his life cautiously, carefully, and he practices everything according to Sharia and Allah's principles. And this is the definition of Sufism. Until today, all of the discussions I've had with you, have we spoken about this or other things? Tell me. So can there be a bit... Uh, am I a Sufi? Are we Sufis? That I should have shown you how to maybe float in the air or fly. No, there's no, no achievement in this. This is no big deal. This is nothing even the mosquito flies. Even, even, even spiders and insects, they can fly. No, the miracle is this, that we live our whole life in this world, on planet Earth. That even the people who don't like us, they say, ah, oh, he was a good person. Even the so-called enemy who doesn't like me individually in our life, someone who's against me, say, no, he's a good person. I've quarrels with him, but he's a good person, human being. In other words, the other human beings, our fellow uh, relatives or colleagues, even people who are not Muslims, they say, no, he's a great person. He's got good character. We should receive good feedback after 10 years, 15, 20 years. Oh, that person, do you know him? Yeah, he was a very good person. Good akhlaq, good manners, good conduct. I really like him. Genuine man. Genuine man. So this is the greatest karamat. And this is called the wali Allah. Because 
he grabbed hold of Allah's ahkams, Allah's uh, orders and principles. If we become like this, that's where the enjoyment lies. So my brothers, let's live our lives carefully. Let's tread, uh, trod carefully. Very simple method, very easy method. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنٌ there's no tax Allah is asking for us, no excess, no oppression, Allah has not uh, given us hardship, rather a very easy method Allah has given in the Quran that this is my favor upon you, my greatest favor upon you. Allah says all the favors are given to you, O human beings. All of the favors and namas are made human beings, gave you eyes, ears, nose, stomach, all the favors. The greatest favor above all of them is that I gave you the opportunity to be a member of the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the opportunity to do his itabah to imitate him and the greatest the most the most ungrateful person is he who is a mu'min after reciting la ilaha illallah despite being an ummati of the prophet muhammad sallallahu despite accepting the prophet sallallahu that he he obeys or he practices the strange ways other ways he leaves the sunnah of his nabi sallallahu and he observes the sunnah of the strange ways opposing ways Different methods, different practices. He wakes up in the morning, he wakes up his own way, in the way of the strange way, and in opposition to the method of the Prophet. So all night long ibadah is wasted. To this extent, it's been stated that a mu'min who's grateful, who's grateful, tell me. That have you heard uh, the word uh, qabz? Qabz, constipation. Urdu is qabz. We ask people, oh, I've got bad health. Five days, ten days, I took medicine. And, but I've got qabas, I've got constipation. It's so hard. What a big disease and an illness. Ask the scientists and doctors, but Allah is the greatest physician, gave the solution to this extent that when you go to pass the stool excrement, when you go to toilet, they go with that tariqah of the Prophet ﷺ, his method, because there's a great favor that you are relieving yourself. This is a great name of Allah that Allah is allowing us to relieve ourselves. Even this is an emma. So we will implement that favor when we do it in accordance to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu way. Say Subhanallah. And we will be asked, Allah said, I taught you how to excrete, how to relieve yourselves in the toilet. What a great favor of mine upon you, Allah says. And were you grateful for this favor of mine of how to relieve yourself? We say, yes, Allah, we did. We washed our hands. Then we sat down. and Then we ate again. Then we ordered a burger. Is this a favor of Allah? Allah say that that time I told you the tariqah, that the way my Prophet Muhammad told you the dua, you should have recited that dua and you would have repaid my favor. Yet in the morning when you woke up, and I allowed you to wake up, then the favor, the way you should have repaid it, is that you should have recited that dua, that the Prophet how he used to recite the dua. So remember this point, my brethren, that if you want to repay the favors of Allah, then there's only one tariqah, one method. All those du'as that Rasulullah SAW taught us in different times of the day, every Muslim needs to learn them, memorize them, repeat them, recite them when you wear clothes, eat food, sit in the car, you go to your wife, when you discuss to all of these things, are actions, if we recite those du'as with those actions, with the fadl mercy of Allah, then Allah's favors will continue to descend upon us. And if we close the kitab and we think we can repay Allah's favors, never, never ever will we achieve that. And that if we want to be successful and pass the test and repay the favors Allah Ta'ala has given to us and repay the favor of the deeds we implemented, we are old and we don't even know the du'as, how to eat, do the du'a when we're eating, when we're free from relieving ourselves in the toilet, what is the du'a? We don't even know that how to go into the toilet, what's the du'a going in, when we come out the du'a, when we wake up in the morning the du'a, such beautiful beloved du'as, alhamdulillah, that subhanallah, that we should not, we don't even feel like leaving the bed due to the du'a. I tell you the truth, the truth. Tahajjud time, what is the dua for waking up? Wudu, when you finish, what is the dua? Uh, when you pray tahajjud, what's the dua? Starting tahajjud. And when you read the sunnah, the two sunnah for the fajr salah, what is the dua? You wake up. Allah has allowed you to wake up. You've done wudu at home. And then in your home, the tariqah is that. You should after doing wudu. Then we run here to do wudu in the masjid. And you tell me that what answer will we give that you use the hot water of the masjid, use the resources of the masjid. What's the answer? How will we account for that to Allah? Is, is, the, is the boiler uh, shut down in your home? And hot water is not in your home? Is the toilet on your home? Is this jais that you leave your home, you use the resources of, your, of the masjid and you leave the thawab? That person who does wudu at home, he's like that person who's wore the haram and he's going on hajj. That's the rule. I'm not saying this. 
that you should you're saving the wudu. I'm not just saying we're lazy. Oh, it's alright. I'll wake up, I'll go home to the masjid, and I'll chit chat with the brothers in the wudu every year. This is wrong. I'm not saying it's haram, but this is wrong. This is excess. Excess. The, the Mulana Muftiyan will tell us this. That there's such a great thawab you're leaving at home, and you're coming to the masjid to use the hot water of the masjid, to use the electricity and the gas of the masjid, I'll ask you one question. Will you be able to answer to Allah that why you didn't do this at home? How will you answer to Allah? Allah will ask, where's my home, my masjid? This is for those people on a journey, they come from far, or they break the wudu on the way, or musafir posol, he didn't get the chance to wudu, and he comes to the masjid to wudu. It's not for us, is it? This is not a small thing, that my home is a few yards away from the masjid, and I come to the masjid, and miswak in the masjid, I'll do uh, wudu at the masjid, I'm doing miswak on the way. This is not the haq. This is not the haq. The aql does not allow me to accept this. So we'll have to give answer for all of these things. Left to answer. Everything has an answer. Every point and air will be grabbed. Will be grabbed and asked. The, the, why did you commit this excess? We're sitting down. Okay, for enough. You in the masjid. You break wudu. You come from far. You can't go back home. You miss salah. Okay, do wudu at the masjid. But if you're coming from home with ease, you got time. You should do wudu at home. Apply the fragrance. Put the clothes on. Recite durood and remember Allah. And you get hundreds of thousands of rewards just coming to salah like that. So will we do this, my friends? Inshallah, you're not unhappy with what I'm saying, are you? Mashallah, good, very good, well done. These are small points, but when will we get the thawab? When all of these factors, we do the du'as for these. We pray for these. These du'as that Allah Ta'ala has taught us, these are great actions. Great action. Great sunnahs of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Great sunnahs. Look at this. Dahiri sunnah has in effect people praise, oh, you're looking good. But the asal sunnah, the real sunnah, and we don't get reward and we leave them. This is Raya showing off. So those people who are show offs, he'll have to do all of this first. And that's why the Mashaikh say that before you make your appearance of the sunnah in the, part, in the previous times, all the time, there was no ijazah for these things. At that time, you get the ijazah when you crush your desires of a murid 10, 15 years of, of making effort. Then you can wear this clothes, this attire, uh, so that you're not showing off, so there's no nifaq hypocrisy. I would like to tell you one point, you'll be amazed in this day and age in my thinking, uh, close to me, that mashallah, they're very great people, but uh, this ajiz, this humble servant thinks that the ulama ikram, the scholars, the maqam, they have a hadith and fiqh and jurisprudence, everything, they are two great people. One is the father and son, the, the father left two sons, Kamal, mashallah. Hazrat Rafi Usmani, Muddu Zalali, and Hazrat uh, Mufti Taki Usmani, sahab rahmatul, uh, damad barakatuh. Great individuals, ajeeb shakhsiyat, ajeeb personality. And I was thinking in depth that in his words, there's ajeeb, beautiful points here. Hadith, he used to recite, beautiful effect and color in his words, ajeeb. And uh, mashallah, from our area in Karachi, and uh, Masjid, I used to pray there. Juma Salah, he used to come there. Big Masjid. And um, mashallah, the relationship with him was different. That's what I'm telling you. I know his life, his background, his effect. So now the point when I realized this was ajeeb, he states that the two brothers were taken as a mufti, Shafi Sahib Rahmatullah, who's his father. Great personality. Great scholar, the Khalifa, the deputy of Hazrat Tanvi. So both brothers were ready, they would learn fiqh, they would become mufti, alims, great prime to the life with the tarbi of their father, ilm, knowledge. And when the color, the effect started to take place, when they started to become known, this speech that both brothers were taken by the father and they were given into the company of who? Hazrat Dr. Abdul Haysab. He wasn't an alim, he was a doctor, not an alim, not a scholar. He wasn't a scholar. And such a great uh, alim, Mufti Shafi Sahib, both of his sons are alims, muftis, and they're being handed over, assigned to who? Dr. Abdul Hai Sahib, who's not a scholar himself, but he himself, as a Dr. Abdul Hai, got tarbiyah from Hazrat Tanvi Sahib, who's a deputy himself. As a Dr. Abdul Hai Arifi, was a khalif of Hazrat Tanvi Sahib himself. And this humble servant also had company of Hazrat Abdul Hai. So Hazrat Dr. Abdul Hai was the sheikh of Hazrat Mufti Taki Sahib and Hazrat Mufti Rafi Usmani Sahib. So they're both scholars, but their sheikh was not a scholar. So when both were handed over, sign and has the Mufti Sahib Shafi Sahib the father said please give them bayah and teach them tasawwuf and do the tarbi and he left them in the company so they said that we were signed and then they cried and they cried and said that I swear by Allah and say that my father was a Mufti he was himself a sheikh I had ustads I had teachers I done hafs hafs and, but he said I swear by Allah that I, Mufti Taki Sahib said, there are no words to describe that even in the day in the hereafter, I cannot repay the favors of Dr. Abdul Haysab, my sheikh, who taught me the greatest blessings, that I would be totally zero today if my father had not assigned me and handed me over to my sheikh. 
my spiritual shaykh Hadid, Dr. Abdul Hay. Listen to one event. I tell you that how insan attains tarbiyah and how he said, I couldn't repay the favor of my shaykh, Dr. Abdul Hay. You need to make effort. He said, when I was handed over to my shaykh, Dr. Abdul Hay, sahab, and he was very delicate. I even I know this. I've met him, seen him. Very beautiful, beautiful, melodious, beautiful speech. Haleem, mild manner, gentle, with love and affection. By chance, um, when, subhanAllah, they had his company, and even he gave me uh, uh, attention, he gave me uh, tarbiyah, and mashallah, they, they, he gave uh, attention to people, especially myself as well. So he said, Hazrat Mufti Sahib said that the hukum that we got was such a great order that an alim who's been prepared, and tarbiyah said, until 10 years, we were not allowed to give a speech. How many years? 10 years. Mufti Taqib Sahib said, I did, was not allowed to go to give a speech until Jummah. I was not allowed to give the uh, lead Jummah for 10 years. Is this a small amount of life? A whole decade. Then a big alim, I can't remember his name, a scholar from India in his madrasa. There was a jalsa, a conference and he was called there. He said, we're not allowed. We haven't got ijazah. He said, you haven't got ijazah? You haven't got permission? He was surprised. Who doesn't give you ijazah? He said, my sheikh doesn't give me ijazah. I cannot go there. He said, how can this be? He said, you can ask. I'm not allowed. And he came, the scholar, he spoke to Dr. Abdullah, he said, Hazrat, the point is that please give them ijazah. Um, then Hazrat, he went, he said, Hazrat called us and said that, okay, fair enough, you can give a speech here. He's our own person. And he said, hold on, wait, let me show you something. He went inside and he had so, he brought so many letters out. He showed us that these khutu, these letters, this is the reason why I did not allow you for 10 years to give a speech. And they realized, whose letters are these? These are letters from Hazrat Sheikh. Muhammad Zakaria Saab about you, regarding you, he kept on writing to me and said, do the tarbiyah in such a way that not one thing, everything you need to annihilate, the, the, the worry, the, the pride of the dunya, so they become famous in the world. Dr. Saab, you need to annihilate one thing of this. And what is that? He stated that take raya out of them showing off and don't allow them to have the, re- the requirement of fame, pump. And glory. He said, this is what I did. And this was the effort I made on you. And most definitely, this is what Mufti Taki Sahib himself said. That I felt inside. What is it? That inside them, which is so beautiful. He speaks so beautifully. That normal hadith people hear. But such an effect that Mufti Taki Sahib said. Where he said, I had the tarbiyah of a sheikh. And that's what I attained. And it had an effect. What a great favor of the sheikh. And of Allah. So my brothers, what is this? He said, nothing else. And nothing else. That the tarbiyah I got from my shaykh, I learned this one point. The Nabi al Karim Salasam's life in accordance to his sunnah, his, his practice. How do I practice that in my life? Practically, it's got to come to life. Now, every action that we do, every action from morning until evening, what is it that we do? Morning till night, according to the Prophet Salasam's with his du'as, that what du'as did he recite this time, at that time, at this occasion, wearing clothes, doing this. Every action we do, we recite the du'as. So my brothers, may Allah Ta'ala give us all the tawfiq, ameen, that we can mold our lives in accordance to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in accordance to his ways, and there's a great favor on us. Allah's ni'mas are so many infinite, and there's no other message that we can understand. So if we don't do this, then we cannot repay the favors of Allah, not even one. Wa akhru dawahum, and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.